our presentation right now is fingerprints on mobile devices abusing and leaking with our presenters Tao Wei and Yulong Zong. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to our talk at the lunch time. I'm Tao and this is Yulong. Today we will present our work on Android fingerprint security. And this is the teamwork with uh, Zhao Feng and Hui. And today there are more and more smartphones equipped with uh, fingerprint sensors. And these five brands are the existing uh, smartphone on the, in the United States markets. But uh, in the near future, there will be more than 50% of the smartphones will have a fingerprint sensor by, 19, by 2019. And fingerprints improve usability quite a lot. People can use fingerprint to unlock the system screen to pay to authenticate. And you can do a lot and uh, without using the boring and uh, insecure passcode. Uh, however, there are still other risks for using fingerprint. And the biggest one is the leaking. If you leak a password, it's easy. You can replace it. And however, if you leak your fingerprint, it will be leaked for the rest of your life. And you have only 10 fingerprints to leak. Moreover, it yeah, moreover, it, it is associated with your identity record, criminal, criminal history, immigration history, and banking credentials, etc. So, you know, it is very dangerous. And even, it would be even worse if the attacker can remotely harvest fingerprints in a large scale. And researchers have shown that fingerprints can be stolen from a polished surface like a glass or smartphone screen. Furthermore, fingerprints can be even be extracted from a waving photos. So you should take a photo like this, not like this. <laughs> and, uh, by the, and then attackers can spool fing fingerprints using electronic conductive materials. And they can use these fake fingerprints to un unlock your smartphone to and store your money from your uh, mobile accounts. And uh, today we will talk about uh, system attacks against the fing fingerprints. And uh, we will focus on uh, four ki kinds of attack. To our knowledge, we are the first one to discuss system attacks against the fingerprint authentication frameworks. Today, I will introduce the design of uh, Android fingerprint frame frameworks including the recognition and the, uh, the framework to support recognition. After that, Yulong will present the system attacks against the fingerprints. Okay, let's uh, talk about uh, recognition first. Uh, fingerprint fingerprint uh, recognition is uh, very, very complex. Usually it uh, includes multiple steps. The first phase is about the minutia extraction. And the system will convert uh, gray scale raw image into the face image and then into the skeleton image and then identify those uh, critical details and extract them as uh, malicious. And after that, in the system will use some magical algorithm to match the extracted malicious against the database to identify the, the owner. The, uh, the workflow is rather complex. so and the vendor should provide a framework to support this workflow. And this uh, framework is the uh, oldest one, the fing fing fingerprint framework without trust zone. And, and uh, all the old, uh, you know, the fingerprint framework on the old laptop are all similar to this. So this, uh, this issue is not only limited to a smartphone, but, uh, you know, we are affect all the smart devices with uh, fingerprint device, uh, sensors. As you can see, uh, if an app want to use the fingerprint, it will contact the fingerprint service. And then to use the kernel um, fingerprint sensor driver to access the hard drive, hardware to uh, read the image. Um, after processing the malicious, it will be stored in the encrypted fingerprint database. Mm, this framework is uh, vulnerable to the routing attack. If, uh, if uh, attackers can root the device, they can steal your fingerprints either from the memory or from the storage. So how to defend? The answer from the, trust, uh, the ARM community is the trust zone. 
Transform can separate the system into normal world and a secure world. And, and then it, the system can contain potential compromise in the normal world. Um, by using Transform, the, here is the Leo fingerprint framework. And instead of uh, access the hardware di directly from the kernel space, the kernel um, will use the Transform driver to uh, talk to the secure world in the Transform and the fingerprint translate in the trust zone will access the hardware and store the fingerprints. In this way, even with the root, uh, even with the kernel uh, modular privilege, attacker cannot uh, access the, the secret uh, fingerprint data. And due to some storage limitation, usually vendor will only store the secure key in the trust zone and uh, store the encrypted fingerprint uh, database in the normal world. But uh, due to the key in the uh, safe place, the attacker still cannot do, do too much in, uh, in the normal world. So now we have a, a, you know, a supposedly s s solid uh, framework. So vendors uh, um, are happy and made the alliance, the vital alliance to provide a simpler, stronger authentication, including fingerprints. As you can see, most of you know, active players in the mobile area join this, comp uh, join this alliance. Uh, we use uh, Samsung Galaxy S5 as an example. This, uh, this Android phone uses uh, these components, including the uh, Exynos 5 with the chest zone and uh, using the Synaptics fingerprint sensor Samsung's own phone framework and the lock lock implementation as the as a, for for the FIDO standard and the paper as a money transaction service. Okay, you know we are presenting exciting system attacks. Welcome, you know. Thanks, Sal, for the introduction. And um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to sell you four attacks targeting at the mobile fingerprint framework. And as a quick sales pitch, in the first attack, we will like, um, try to deceive you, uh, make you thinking that you are swiping for something, but actually we're using your fingerprint to do something else. Uh, in the second and third attack, we can show you that the attacker can remotely harvest fingerprints in a large scale. In the fourth attack, we can show you that the attacker can embed backdoor fingerprints in your device and he can use it to access your phone. So let's go to the first attack. Um, before we go, in go to the details of the attack, we have to clarify two uh, terms. The one is authentication and the other is authorization. Authentication only means who you are, like your passport. Authorization contains more context, and it means what you can do, like the visa, visa stamp on your passport. So for example, here, the passport authenticates the, the identity of, of yourself. But the visa shows, for example, here it's a B1, B2, and there are other kinds of visa that allows you to work in the United States. Authentication is just like every day, like you're bad badging into the company, you use a card to authenticate yourself. Well, authorization is like your everyday activity, using your credit card to authorize a payment. So what's the most important thing when you do authorization? It's the context. So only with the context, you know what you are authorized for. So facing this kind of situation, I'm not sure how many of you guys dare to swipe your credit card without a context. You don't know what you are doing. So what are your fingerprints? Is it authentication or is it authorization? Here I want to do a quick survey. So how many of you guys use fingerprint to unlock your mobile phone? Hmm, there are plenty of, of you guys. So here's the good news or bad news. For all of you raising your hand, potentially you are, have been the victim of this attack. <laughs> so do you ever have a second, second thought when you use your fingerprint to unlock your device? Well, probably you don't. 
like me, myself, I don't have a second thought. So what if I tell you, when you do the swiping, the attacker in the background can transfer your money away? Would you still like swap the fingerprints without second thought? Here are some quick questions. How can you testify what's happening behind this fingerprint swiping behavior? Well, you cannot tell. Because the vendor just showed you a lock image, and you swipe, the lock disappeared. You don't know what's happening behind. And what's the difference of swiping to unlock the device with swiping to authorize a mobile payment transaction? Well, probably you can tell from the UI display, but in the background, you cannot tell. So before we do the tech demo, um, I want to show you how uh, fingerprint-based mobile payment works. So here is, oh, for, sorry, let me start from the beginning. So here is the payment app. I want to transfer some money to my girlfriend. So I press transfer request. And the, the app immediately asks me for authentication or authorization, whatever it is. It asks me to swap the finger over the home key. It didn't tell, you, tell me what's happening here. It is actually for authorization, because it asks me to fill in all the details, like who to send the money to, and how much money I want to send, send to. And only if I approve this transaction, the money will be transferred away. So in essence, in the normal uh, fing um, fingerprint-based mobile payment framework, your fingerprint acts as uh, authorization. But we can, we can launch the confused attack to lure the user to think that this is authentication, but it is used for authorization. So here is the attack demo. As you can see, that this is the uh, unlocking uh, interface that everyone can see on your phone. And now the user tried to unlock the phone. And boom, the money is transferred away. So this is the illustration of, of, of what's happening in the background. So in the real world, when the attacker launches the attack, he will not show the tra transaction uh, process to you. I just want to tell you what's happening behind, so I, sh I displayed them in the UI interface. So the attacker, with the author authorization, it fills in all the details, like who to send the money to, which is the attacker's account, and how much money he wants to transfer, for example, $1,000. And he can just do this automatically in the background without being noticed. So this is the vulnerability. Applications often mistakenly treat authorization as authentication, and fail to provide context proofs for authorization. So even, even the user can tell what's the difference between author, uh, authentication and authorization. Without proper context proof, the attacker can still mislead the victim to authorize a malicious transaction by disguising it as authentication or another transaction. For example, he's, tra he's mimicking transfer money to uh, President Obama, but actually it's transfer money to Yulong. So in this demo, the attacker fixed lock screen to fool the user to think that he is swiping finger to unlock the device. But actually, the fingerprint is used to authorize the money transfer in the background. There are some solutions right now. So FIDO Alliance provides a specification that you have to implement what you see is what you sign. Basically, the vendors should enable the user to display your uh, context proof to the user to let the user know what, he, what he's doing with his fingerprint. But there is the assumption. The trans transaction confirmation display should be trusted. And this is a strong assumption. For the original fingerprint auth uh, framework without trusted zone, 
there is simply no reliable way to provide the authorization context proof because you are just implement the UI in the normal world above the uh, Linux kernel in the normal Android framework. So att if the attacker, attacker can get system privilege or even root privilege, he can easily forge the uh, UI display to you. The framework with trust zone can be improved to achieve this goal to provide trusted context proof. But so far, we haven't seen any major vendor that implemented this feature. So let's go to the second attack. I think everyone thinks that your fingerprint is well secured on your phone. So imagine like this, this is the lock on your fingerprint. But the reality is like this. So for those talent hackers sitting down there, can anyone tell what's going wrong here? Anyone? Exactly. So this is word readable. Any unprivileged process or apps can steal the user's fingerprints by reading this image file. Although the file format is distorted, which I will cover later, it is easy to re recover. We found this problem on, on HTC One Max. HTC has patched it by working with its vendor after our notification. So we dumped the file uh, in binary format and show it to you guys like this. This is just one line of the binary file. So we can see that it has multiple lines similar to this one. So we can guess this is a bitmap. And each line starts with FE01. Each line is not properly four byte aligned because as a bitmap image, it has to be four byte aligned. So we, we thought we can fix it by padding. So this is the, how the image looks like when we dump this image from the device. So at first glance, it doesn't look like anything. So we do the four bytes align padding by pad padding some like zero in the end of each line. It will look like this. So after seeing this, you can tell this is definitely someone's fingerprint, right? We don't know why it's separated into two parts. The left part is uh, double the width of the right part, but clearly it's a fingerprint image. So someone may ask me, this is, this is like uh, easy to fix problem. We just hide the fingerprints in the trust zone. Then you cannot access it. Is it true? Well, trust zone is not unbreak unbreakable if vendor's code is buggy. So we have plenty of works out there attacking the um, uh, trust zone. Like this year, uh, the guy didn't, make, uh, didn't have pa a visa uh, passed so he, he didn't come here to give, give the talk, talk. So he found a bug in Trust Zone and he got code execution in Trust Zone. So in this way, the attacker can still like, uh, get the fingerprint data from Trust Zone. So that's the second attack. So let's go to the third attack, which is my favorite. So it's the fingerprint sensor spying attack. What it is? Let's get some background. So, um, on mobile devi devices with Trust Zone, uh, it p pretty much looks like this. You have user space, kernel space, and there is hardware beneath. And the world is separated into two. One is the normal world, and one is protected by Trust Zone. In the normal world, you cannot access anything in inside Trust Zone. If an app wants to use a fingerprint feature, it will call the fingerprint service in the normal world user space. The fingerprint service will, uh, has an encrypted fingerprint database and it will, it will contact with Trust Zone Daemon to do further communications with the sensor. The Trust Zone Daemon will talk, about the, uh, talk to the Trust Zone driver in the kernel space. The Trust Zone driver in the kernel space will forward the request to monitor and uh, Trust Zone micro kernel in the Trust Zone. It will further proxy the request to the, uh, one of the trustlet which is the fingerprint handler. The fingerprint translate will further talk to the SPI driver in the trust zone 
and communicate with the sensor device. So this looks pretty much perfect, right? Everything is separate, easy isolate, while, while isolated. The operations are only performed in the trust zone, and the data is kept in the trust zone. But the problem is, do we have a path from the normal world to access the, the sensor? Well, I can tell you it is. There, there is a way. So in the no normal world kernel space, there is an SPI driver where the, the, the app can talk to. So the SPI driver can directly talk to the device in the normal world. Imagine the app is the malware. Then the malware can directly talk to the fingerprint sensor and the real fingerprint. By reverse engineering the, uh, uh, the proprietary binary driver and uh, read the vendor's open source kernel code, one can easily obtain the operations enabled, like the IO control power on, power off, device reset, set clock, and initial, how to initialize the device to a, a, a stream reading mode. So this is easy to recover, but there's still some challenge because when you do the IO control communications, you have to carry some protocol data uh, to, to communicate with the sensor. But this is a big challenge, but it's uh, feasible to get because you can just hook the uh, IO control methods to ob obtain the protocol binaries. So I can give you a quick demo of how I achieved this attack. So you can see that there is a phone using USB cable connecting to my laptop. Uh, this is a pretty general problem shared by many vendors, so you don't have to concern about which device I'm holding. Uh, I'm, I'm using ADB shell to connect to the device. So as an unprivileged uh, user, uh, you can also do this. But for illustration, I'll just use shell user for the attack. So I wrote a small program called FPR, fingerprint hack. What it does is to open the fingerprint scanner for reading and register as a listener of many of the device interrupts. And then it will initialize and calibrate the device for reading. And then it's ready for swipe. The attacker can do this in the background all the day, I mean all the year, without being noticed by you. So now I'm going to put my finger on my home button, which is also the fingerprint sensor. Hopefully I can succeed. There you go. Once I touch the ho my home button, you can see a lot of data dumped out. So let me roll up to the very beginning. So probably you'll, 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 you'll think that the data is, looks quite, quite familiar because I just showed the data to you. Each line is starting with FE01. So this is one line of the bitmap image. The line starting with the counting number as two and increasing by one for each line. So two, three, four, five. So each line is, uh, has a number with it. So if we group those lines into one big uh, bitmap, you can get the idea of how it looks like. It's just my fingerprint. But I'm not that silly to show you my fingerprint here. <laughs> So we have confirmed this vulnerability on devices, including HTC One Max and Samsung S5. On Samsung devices, there is something to be noted. So the attacker has to root the device and load it with a carefully crafted uh, ROM to enable some of the device operations. But as long as you can get the root, you can do this easily. So both vendors have promptly passed this vulnerability per our notification. And it should be a general problem, not only limited to HTC and Samsung. So many, most of the vendors should be concerned about this. So why? Why there is this kind of problem here? So the, imagine the user wants to swipe the fingerprint. He touched the fingerprint, uh, he touched the sensor, and he wants to see some interaction from the normal world UI. For example, if you want to register fingerprint, the UI will tell you that here's step one, please stab your finger for once. Oh, it's not a perfect fingerprint, please, get, please swipe it for another time. 
such kind of issue is handled by normal world user, in, user UI. So the normal world UI has to further uh, proxy the dev uh, device operation request to the trusted zone device. The trusted zone device is the one that actually can operate with the device. But the normal world UI will just uh, reflect what's going on down there. So he has to read the device state, like whether the, 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 the fingerprint has already been captured, whether the device is ready, et cetera. So it has to access the device in the normal world. It's unavoidable. So that's why it still needs direct control of the device, which also open the, will open the access to the malware. So in this way, the attacker can easily uh, break through this path to steal the fingerprint from the fingerprint sensor. So after our notification, Samsung is actively working on this issue. And here's how Samsung currently solved this problem. So instead of rendering the, uh, uh, finger, uh, the fingerprint registering, uh, fingerprint logging on uh, interactions in normal world UI, they currently render, try to render the uh, operations in trusted zone UI. So in this way, all the operations can be just implemented in trusted zone without enabling the normal world hackers to get away to access the normal world sensor, or to get through the, to the sensor. So the vendors can lock down the device into the trusted zone. Only the trusted zone code can access the driver, or can access the device. And here's how Apple solves it right now. So Apple still has the problem of allowing the normal world code to access the sensor, but it encrypts the fingerprint data reading out of the sensor. So in this way, it didn't break the uh, design of like using normal world to, 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 to reflect the status transition of the fingerprint uh, reading framework. And still it uh, uh, forbids the attacker to easily obtain the fingerprint data because it is, the data is encrypted. Okay, let's go to the fourth attack, the back door of the pre-embedding fingerprints. So this is, this is an image obtained from my Samsung phone. Uh, it's showing that I have three fingerprints registered, but this is not limited only to Samsung phones. It's a general problem. So how can you attest that only three fingerprints are registered here? Well, you cannot. So let's recap how the framework is designed. So the, the normal word framework handles the rendering of how, man, how many fingerprints are registered in, uh, uh, in the system. So the attacker can easily uh, access this data too, and he can temper, temper it. So even though the framework thinks there are three fingerprints registered, the attacker can modify this and show to the user there are less fingerprints registered. So in this way, for example, there are three fingerprints registered, but essentially there could be four or five or more fingerprints registered. The trusted zone just scans the fingerprint and it matches it against the encrypted fingerprints fed from the normal world. It doesn't have any clue how many fingerprints are actually stored. So the attacker can uh, temper the normal world framework to stealthily pre-embed special fingerprint blob. It doesn't have to be the, fin the attacker's own finger. It can be anything. He can use the, uh, just use something to use as a backdoor finger to swap the device. For example, he can use wood glue to, to force some fake finger to, to unlock the device. And this leaves no explicit traces, which is perfect to use. So how to achieve this? So in, in Android, it is usually the settings app that displays the register fingerprint number to the users. So uh, there is a method can uh, count how many fingers are registered and display on the UI. So the user, uh, the attacker can uh, change the return value of this method to be N minus M, where N is the actual registered fingerprint number and M is the number of fingerprints that's pre-embedded. So uh, N minus one, uh, minus M is the actually displayed number from the attacker to the user. 
uh, one thing to be noted is if you simply change, modify, mo modifying the uh, settings app, uh, it will be, have some problem because settings app is signed by the system uh, signature. But this is easy to conquer. You can just uh, change the services.jar, which, is, which is itself is not signed. You can change this jar to, to make, make, make the settings app uh, to not to be verified the, certi the, cert the, the signing certificate. So in this way, we can bypass the, the signing certificate check. So here's a quick demo. So you can see I'm going to the settings to check how many fingerprints are registered. So you can see that there's only one fingerprint that's registered currently in the system. I have marked my fingers as number one finger, number two finger, and number three finger. So I'm not cheating, I can prove. So now I'm in lock the device and try to unlock the device using my first fingerprints. It works. And now I'm going to try the second one. Oh, it also works. And you can guess what's happening next. The third one also works. So the attacker can use it at the back door to unlock your device. So imagine that Tao, as an experienced hacker, he has many zero days on his email thread, I guess. So I just pre embed my fingerprint in his device. So every time he has a new exciting zero day, I can get it. So here's a final discussion about all the four attacks. So mobile devices with fingerprint sensors are more and more popular, and there are more and more functionalities associated with fin fingerprints. But there are still severe security challenges for the vendors. So we have shown you uh, four kinds of attacks here, but there could be more out there. So such kind of security floors can lead to fingerprint leakages. So this is, this is not simply leakage, it's fingerprint leakage. If you leak your password, you can just change it. If you leak fingerprints, this lasts for your whole life. The industry should pay more attention to audit existing design and the imp implementations of fingerprint frameworks. So we have a few suggestions to the mobile, mobile phone users. So you have to stick to mobile device vendors with timely patching and upgrading to the latest version, for example, to Lollipop. So don't use some pre-aged like, devices that can be, for example, routed by uh, ping pong route. And always keep your device up to date. So interesting, uh, I just saw a ping pong root demo that he used fingerprints to unlock his device. So always in install popular apps from reliable so sources, such as Google Play. And for enterprise users, um, you have to take special care. You are not normal users. You should seek for professional services to get, uh, to get away from advanced uh, persistent attacks. And to pro provide a better level protection of end users, just don't root your device um, if unnecessary. And also just keep your device updated because the attackers will try to root your phone too. And several suggestions to mobile vendors. So vendors should also improve the security de design of the fingerprint auth framework, such as improve the recognition algorithm to uh, defend against fake fingerprint attacks, and the better protection of both fingerprint data and the device, the sensor. And you have the differentiating uh, authorization with authentication clearly. Also, the existing uh, fingerprint standard should be further improved to provide more detailed and secure guidelines for, for developers to follow. Right now, the guidelines just say you have to implement the trusted uh, UI, but it didn't tell you that how to implement it as trusted. So given the security standard, vendors still need professional security auditing to enforce security implementations. 
and patch vulnerabilities timely, especially those root vulnerabilities. Uh, it's not done yet. So in this talk, we only focus, focused on mobile phones. But this also applies to all the platforms with fingerprints enabled. So for, for example, so many high-end laptops also have fingerprint scanners to authenticate and to authorize users' operations. For example, the laptops. So as our future work, we'll, we'll spend some time to investigate like other platforms with uh, fingerprint scanners. So for other external uh, fingerprint scanners uh, that, that is not embedded, not integrated with the device, uh, they also should take special care. Like there are fingerprint scanners used in immigration office, used in the custom house, used in the DMV. They are connecting to some like uh, laptops or uh, mobile devices, I don't know. So in this way, the attacker still has an access vector to the fingerprint scanners. So the situation is similar. So we suggest that all the vendors should like, uh, improve that current design. So that's all about our presentation, and we are open to questions. Thank you. Uh, the question is, uh, for Apple devices, whether the encrypted fix uh, is uh, per device or uh, it's a general fix, right? Is the key per individual device, or is there one for all devices? Oh, okay. The, the yeah. question is actually the key, whether the key is per device or it's shared by a common class of devices, right? Okay. It's, uh, it's generated uh, per device. Use some UID similar mechanism to generate the key. So it's per device. According to our knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Um, is there any scope on the iPhone for the sensor sniffing attack if you have root? Can you hear me? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question again? So on the Samsung S5, you said with a custom ROM, it's possible to sniff the uh, fingerprint sensor data? And I'm just wondering if the same thing would be possible on uh, the iPhone. Did you get a question? Sorry, maybe we can talk uh, offline. Okay. The, well, there is an like, echo here in our area, so yeah. we cannot hear it clearly. So we can communicate offline. What, what is the encryption that is used in iOS? for communicating with the actual sensor? Oh, we, we don't uh, have clear knowledge about that. Some, you know, in the implemented in the hardware, we don't have uh, much time to reverse engineer that yet, yet. Sorry. Yeah, based on our specification, it could be AES-256 or something. So it's in, uh, in the specification. Yeah. But we have no way to access documents. So it's a, prep, it's a proprietary uh, in their chip. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, maybe that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you again. <laughs>